Wait until you see where we're going to go today. This is Moyne Abbey in County Mayo, a site where history, mystery, and the supernatural meet. We're gonna go on a little adventure. I'm taking my two boys with me here to Moyne Abbey. Yeah, and they're gonna come right. for a little visit with me to have a look at this really historic building. Wow. Say hello guys. Hello. Hi. <laughs> For though, for though, it was a stormy night, the kind that made grown men nervous and children hide under their covers. But there was a local clerk who had a fondness for the drink and he was a bit too macho for his own good. His name was Peter Cumming and he wouldn't waste an opportunity to show off to the lads. So he met his friends at a local establishment nearby here in Kalala and he declared confidently, confidently one night that he would retrieve a skull from the cursed ruins here of Moyne Abbey. Well, the lads thought he was full of it, so they bet him a golden guinea that he wouldn't do it. Well, that settled it for him, of course. Off he went in the wind and the rain, delighted with himself for being a big, brave man, and he decided he'd get that guinea and show them all. Now, back then, there were skulls and skeletons strewn about the place here. In fact, I think there were uh, apparently two chambers here that were completely full of them. So Peter took one skull without any hesitation and just as he grabbed it, he heard a voice that echoed here through the ruins saying, Peter coming, what are you doing with my skull? Well, you can imagine his terror. He stopped dead in his tracks, his heart in his mouth. He looked up to see a blue light and the ghostly figure of his own grandfather, Porrick, coming. So the granddad said, why do you disturb the dead Peter? Return what you've taken and leave us to rest. Well, needless to say, Peter wasn't feeling too brave all of a sudden. And so he raced out of the abbey and the ruins, as pale as the ghost you've just seen. He was still carrying the skull that he had picked up along the way, but he was shaking like a leaf. He nevertheless went ahead and presented it to his friends, his lads back in Kalala. And of course they were duly impressed, but a bit horrified. Well, of course, Peter didn't sleep a wink that night. And it wasn't long before he came back and returned here to the abbey to bury the skull, restoring dignity to the dead. He said he was sure somebody was watching him as he left the place, never to return. The experience left him a changed man, filled with a newfound respect for the supernatural and a respect for the sanctity of the dead. Not all tales of Moyne Abbey are so spine chilling. This place has a very interesting origin story too. So the Franciscan monks who went on to establish it were searching for a long, long time to find a suitable location for their monastery. And they were running out of options. So eventually they knelt in prayer and asked God for a sign. Now a little robin came along and landed on the branch of an oak tree in this little plain by the River Moy. Now, the bright red breast of the robin was said to be stained with the blood of Christ, and that was a mark it earned for its valiant attempt to ease his pain during the crucifixion. That's according to legend. So anyway, this little robin led them to this lush green pasture here by the River Moy. Now, the monks saw that as a divine sign, and they declared, God has shown us the site of our monastery. So then they established Moyne Abbey here and it became a sanctuary of peace and spirituality. Now, didn't the robin choose the site very well? Because there was ready access to drinking water and there were lots of opportunities for hunting and fishing. And it was also useful because the site was secluded enough to avoid raids and disturbances for many years. But just let's look at how beautiful this place is, even now, even though it's in ruins. Inside, there are rib vaulted ceiling, ornate stone carvings, and the remnants of ancient frescoes 
that tell tales of devotion and artistry. And these cloisters, once bustling with monks, now serene, echoing the past. The west doorway was a Renaissance addition and this beautifully crafted east window behind me has become an emblematic of the whole diocese. There are famous people from history buried here too, including many members of the O'Dowd clan, including chieftains who ruled the land. I told you before about the O'Dowd uh, chieftain who fell in love with a Selkie across an Enniscrone. Now a Selkie, if you remember, is a mythical creature um, that transforms from a seal into a human. So that guy, or his family certainly, are said to be buried here. And uh, if you haven't heard that story before, I do recommend that you go and listen to it tonight because it's very relevant. But anyway, how did Moy Abbey come to be a ruin like this? Well, the Abbey was founded in 1460 by the Burke family and it was consecrated two years later. Now, the Burks, they're an interesting family in themselves. And there's actually a connection to Grace O'Malley, Grania Ní uh, otherwise known as the Pirate Queen of Connacht. And she was connected to the family of the Burks with her second marriage to Richard, Richard Burke. Now, it was a strategic marriage and not exactly for love as such and Gronya being the cute woman that she was and very fiery, took advantage of the one-year rule under Brehan law at the time. So after a year, she famously came along and said to her husband at the time, Richard Burke, I dismiss you. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> That's all she said. And that allowed her to end the marriage while keeping the benefits she had gained from the alliance. She was cute enough, Gráinne. So for over a century, then, Moyne Abbey here was a centre of spirituality and learning. The monks lived here in peace, studying, teaching, and tending to their gardens and mills. But this peace, sadly, was shattered in the late 1850s. Sir Richard Bingham, the English governor of Connacht, who was apparently a uh, bad enough guy, was determined to crush Catholic resistance. Under his command, English forces attacked Moyne Abbey. Chaos ensued as flames engulfed the sacred buildings and the monks fled for their safety. So they had a lot of very precious artifacts and manuscripts, as you can imagine, and many of those were either destroyed or looted. It was a deliberate attempt to erase the cultural and religious heritage of the region. The surviving friars faced ongoing persecution. They tried to maintain their religious duties, but the constant threat of violence made it nearly impossible. Over the years, the once thriving community dwindled and the abbey fell into further disrepair. There is still talk of treasure buried somewhere within the Abbey's grounds. So the story goes that the friars at the time actually had a feeling that there was going to be an attack. So they had taken all of their precious artifacts and gold and books to protect them and they hid them from the invaders. So ever since then, treasure hunters have scoured the area, but the loot remains elusive. Anyway, about 15 years later, Moyne Abbey then was confiscated and given to Edmund Barrett, who would have been a favourite of Queen Elizabeth I. She's turning up again. Remember, she met Grania Whale as well. He, uh, so he was her favourite. And at that time, then, many of the Abbey's stones were repurposed by the subsequent owners, and that sped up its decline as well. Then Cromwellian forces are rumoured to have used gunpowder to destroy the remaining structure in the 17th century. And the great bell from the Queen of Spain that would have been in the bell tower here was sold and lost. And that marked the complete dissolution of this sacred site. According to legend, the bell was cursed to ring whenever danger was near. 
on some stormy nights some say you can still hear the faint tolling a ghostly reminder of the Abbey's troubled past. So there you have it, the haunting and fascinating tales of Moyne Abbey. It's a hidden treasure here in North Mayo. And there are stories, I think, behind every stone in this country. And I'm sure there's more even to Moyne than I've told you here. So if you know of any other stories, please let me know. Uh, I'm just so fascinated by them. Subscribe, Subscribe to, to the Sleepy, Sleepy Scholar. Scholar now. Bye. 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 <laughs>